folks and welcome to Therso Grows Fermenting Workshop for Beginners. My name is Rachel and I've worked for Moo Food for the last three years, which is in Muravord in the Highlands. And one of the things that I was doing during my time with Moo Food is fermenting workshops. And they're for beginners, they're for people who haven't done any fermenting before um, and who are just interested in getting started with some really simple ferments. Um, and I was meant to be coming up to Thurso to come and do this workshop in person, but because of COVID, we've had to adapt. And so here we go. We're going to get three fermenting videos where I'm going to show you how to make kombucha, fermented chili sauce and sauerkraut and to show you the different ways of doing that, um, the different vessels that you can use as well to ferment in and some really key facts that you need to remember when fermenting. So I hope you'll join me on these three workshops um, and let's get started. So first of all, what is fermentation? Well, it's actually the process of breaking down food by using a microorganism, which is normally yeast and or bacteria working together to break down food. So during that process, the microorganisms give off carbon dioxide and also a byproduct is acid or alcohol as well. So we have loads of fermented foods that we eat just normally every day, but we don't even think about them being fermented. Food like cheese, yogurt, beer, soy sauce, as well as things like kombucha, kefir, um, sauerkraut, they've all been fermented. So fermented food doesn't mean rotted or mouldy or anything. Um, actually, it's, it's the opposite of those things because when you ferment food, you actually prevent it from going mouldy or going off. And it means that you have a way of preserving food without needing refrigeration. So not only is fermenting really good for our health, but it's really good for the planet because it reduces food waste. It means that we can preserve our glut of harvest that we have in the summer all the way through the autumn and the winter through to the next spring. It means you can keep food for quite a long time without needing any electricity. So another really interesting fact about eating fermented food is that the process of fermentation actually makes the nutrients inside the food more bioavailable to us, to our guts. So for example, like in kombucha, the B vitamins that are in kombucha are made more bioavailable by the process of fermenting. So it means that we don't need to drink very much of it to get all of those benefits. Whereas if tea hadn't been fermented, we wouldn't be able to absorb those B vitamins. So it's an amazing way to be able to access more of the nutrients that are inside vegetables. So you don't actually need to eat very much of it, um, but you get all of those wonderful vitamins, minerals. They're all really good for you. So just as a wee introduction, I'm just going to show you some of the different vessels that you can use for fermenting. And we're going to use all of these over the different videos that I'm going to make and share with you guys. Um, and so sometimes it can be a bit, bit daunting when you first start doing fermenting. You're kind of like, what kit do I need? Um, people say, oh, you need to have a crock or no, you need to have a glass um, weights. I'm just going to show you what I use and I've kind of honed in on these from trial and error and I'll explain to you why I like different ones. Um, so we have a couple of different fermenting jars here. Um, this is absolutely one of my favourites. This is just from Lakeland. Um, so they were about seven, eight quid, something like that. So that's kind of one jar that you can use. Um, this is just a kilner jar. Um, I know a lot of people like using these because they look really nice um, and they're really pretty to have on your shelf and stuff. Um, I started off fermenting in these ones um, and I have a steri cap um, lid, which also comes with a valve, um, a one-way valve here. This is an airlock, which again, lets carbon dioxide out but doesn't let oxygen in which is key and we'll get into that. Um, also you can get these little capsules that sit on top um, so they stop the apparently stop the smell of fermenting in your kitchen or something. Some people really don't like the smell of 
fermenting food. Um, I don't mind it, but um, I got that to start with when I was fermenting and living in a shared house, and so I didn't necessarily think that it was fair for all of my housemates to smell all of my fermented food um, all the time. And so that's really easy because that just sits on top of there and, and then that's just a one-way system that goes out. And then once the ferment is finished, you can take that lid off and you replace it with just a normal Kilner jar lid. Now, there are pros and cons to this type of jar and I, over time, don't use it as much as this one. It's down to things like this lid is made of metal and as it has come into contact with my ferments it has started to rust and I'll keep explaining that as we go but fermented food reacts with metal. Um, it'll eventually rust it and, and break it down and so you really don't want to have your fermented food in contact with metal also, my other reason for particularly choosing the Lakeland jars over the Kilner jars comes down to these. And these are weights. So you might have heard already a bit about using pebbles or using weights to weigh down your food when you put it into your fermenting jar. So the whole idea is that we're going to layer up our food that we want to ferment. So that might be our cabbage for our sauerkraut and then we fill it up with water or brine and then we use a weight to push all of that food under the water line to make sure that it's not exposed to any oxygen. Um, I'll get into this in a bit more detail when I'm actually doing it but this is just to show you that these are the kind of weights that I use. Um, now you can get one of these, this is called a steri pebble, um, it's just made of glass. Um, they're pretty expensive um, which is what mainly puts me off them and also actually the shape of them I'm sure it's meant to be extremely beautiful and extremely well designed but I actually find it a bit annoying um, and so I have ended up resorting to these which look very similar <laughs> but they're about a quarter of the price and these are just little tea light glass holders you get them from Ikea but I mean I got all of mine from charity shops um, I've only ever got the clear ones, I don't know whether the coloured ones might have some kind of dye in them or something, so just clear tea light holders do exactly the same thing as a glass pebble or glass weight, um, but it's a fraction of the price, you get them for like 20p, 50p each, and that is why mostly I like the Lakeland jars, because they fit. Try and put it in that one, it doesn't fit. Um, so the Lakeland jar gets my vote. They're a bit easier to use. You can use your cheap weight. Um, they're just an easier opening as well to get things in. Um, so yes, that explains a little bit about those different fermenting containers that you can use. So we're just about to make some kombucha, but this is the vessel that I use to make my kombucha. So this is just a drinks dispenser, you can get them in Tesco, um, in the barbecue section kind of thing. This is a five litre one, I know you can get them in about three litres or ten litres or whatever. Five litres is absolutely fine for like two people who are drinking kombucha occasionally. Um, you don't need to have a massive one unless you're going to be drinking kombucha absolutely every day and you're going to be making it every week um, and so what you want it needs to be glass um, having the metal hinges is fine because they're not in direct contact with the kombucha um, and this tap at the front this is plastic um, and so you don't want to have a metal tap because that is in contact with the kombucha and it would corrode eventually and you get all sorts of bits and bobs in your kombucha so you want plastic tap at the bottom, I find that much more helpful than one that doesn't have a tap. Um, and then a nice glass one with hinging lid there, and I'll explain why we've got the tea towel on top in a second. So that just goes to show the kind of different vessels that you can use.
So don't be tempted to just use a normal kilner jar um, with a clip top for your fermenting um, because that is a completely sealed environment and if you've got f food fermenting in there it might explode. It's going to at least you know, put that under huge pressure um, and you need a mechanism for the carbon dioxide to be able to escape but air not to get in. Um, so you can't even like put a tea towel over the top or put a um, mesh over the top or anything, it, it doesn't work. Um, you can, however, use normal mason jars once your ferment is finished. So that chilli sauce has finished fermenting and so I've put it into this kilner jar, closed the lid and that's fine. Um, but while things are actively fermenting, you mustn't put it in a sealed environment. The same going for like just an old jam jar and stuff. If you put <coughs> fermenting food in there and close the lid, eventually it would explode um, and you don't want that happening. So um, I would suggest getting yourself one proper fermenting jar um, with a valve, whether it's a valve like that or a valve like that. Um, or an airlock like you get in beer making as well. They're all doing the same thing. But I would definitely suggest getting a proper fermenting jar um, just so that you can absolutely be sure that it's working and that you're keeping safe as well.